Hi, and welcome back to another episode of The Breakdown with Bethany. I'm Bethany Braun-Silva, and today my guest is tastemaker and fashion expert and mama Liliana Vasquez. On the today's episode, of course, we're going to be talking about fashion tips, but we're also going to be talking finances and why Liliana is saying bye-bye to shoelaces for 2023. This is not to be missed. We are such huge fans of yours over at mom.com, Cafe Mom, and Mamas Latinas. So I'm um, really such an inspiration. I mean, we love to see a, a woman who can, you know, I know it's, it appears to do it all. I know that's not the case, right? Because I'm yeah. a mom too. We all get it. But we're sort of coming off um, a big shopping season, right? The holidays and getting into the new year. And this is a time when people are like refreshing wardrobes, maybe their health, and then maybe their spending. So do you have tips for us to kind of enter 2023 with a little, you know, a little more financially wiser? <laughs> totally. So, you know, I, I'm a list maker in life. And I think what that did for me was carry over um, kind of in terms of how I approach spending and budgets. So I make a list and I kind of prioritize the things that are important expenses for us as a family, like things that we want to do, right? Like I tend to start with high priority, big ticket items, like a vacation, right? And then I kind of break it down into how we're going to get there. And I can break it up quarterly or monthly. I think every family budgets and plans differently. Um, But for us, we set quarterly goals towards those kind of like bigger expenses, right? And that's kind of like longer term planning. Like I know we want to go away in the summer in June, right? So now I have now from January to June to kind of figure that out. And that's for those long term expenses. So I always think, writing it down. I share it in a Google doc with my husband. We both add to it. We get notifications when we've added notes to it, because I do think as we talk about equity and parenting and equity and budgeting, I want my husband to be involved in that. And he wants me to be involved in it. And this way, it's not like, okay, I put together this budget or I put together this spreadsheet, right? It's something that we share together. We update together and we're both responsible for adding notes and thoughts in um, each of us, right? So it doesn't feel like mom's the one in charge of planning the vacation and budgeting for the vacation. So that's kind of like long-term planning, spending goals, budgeting goals. But for shorter term goals, I try to make it as easy as I can on myself because like, you know, this, our to-do list never ends, right? Whether it's like the kids to-do list, whether it's the house to-do list, the mom to-do list. So for me, the blue cash everyday card is just my go-to card. I add it to my phone. I add it to my digital wallet on my computer. And that way I am saving every single time I spend money at the places that I think most parents and especially moms spend money at getting gas because you're driving your kids around like a full-time Uber um, at the grocery store, because we all know like that's my, literally my second home, like Trader Joe's <laughs> and Whole Foods are where I live. Um, and also as I'm just buying things for them and for myself, whether that's like new clothes, because my 17 month old literally outgrows clothes so fast. I've never met a child whose feet are growing this fast. So just knowing that I'm getting cash back whenever I use it, just literally by clicking my phone or hitting like check out on my computer makes me feel like I'm being more conscious and more aware of my spending, but also earning that cash back on those everyday purchases. So I think it's those easy habits that you don't have to think about that actually can add up over the long run. Right. And I think that's what I think is so easy because you don't have to be like, Oh wait, which card do I use and which one gives me points and which ones gives me cash. I feel like having an everyday card, which is like the blue cash card for me, just makes it simple. It takes one thing off of my budgeting to-do list. We need all the simplicity we can get, right? Especially for for coming off the holiday craziness. But okay, so Liliana, in addition to hosting this podcast, I'm also the shopping editor for um, these brands that I mentioned before. Um, So, and we look to you a lot, like for what's cool, trending, you know, like what's going on. So what are you most looking forward to shopping for in 2023 i know you list all, all your essentials so I we're do. Talking, yeah like so what else like what else like what are the okay. things? <laughs> for myself or for my family well let's do let's go for yourself first and then of course this yes, okay can't, can't leave out the so, family. <laughs> totally okay so one thing that i really have decided that i want nothing to do with in 2023 is shoelaces and let me explain this Slip-ons are life when you are a mom, but oftentimes I think we think of slip-ons as like, oh, they can only be Birkenstocks or they can only be flip-flops. And I think there's just so many like chic slip-on loafers. 
So for me, like, I want to be able to just like slide my foot in and like run out the door. Cause I'm usually like holding a baby in one arm and like a bag and a diaper bag in the other. So I'm done with laces. Thank you so much. <laughs> they were great in my previous life. Um, so I'm looking for like really chic slip on. So ones that I love, like right now, golden goose has a pair of sneakers that literally have like shearling inside, no back. So they're like a slip on sneaker mule, which I love because it gives me the comfort and support of a sneaker, but it's like cozy and warm on my foot. And I just slip them on. Um, another is I love like a fancy Birkenstock. And what I mean by that, like there's so many, even target has them now. So it's like a double strap sandal, but maybe instead of just being like a classic leather Birkenstock, it's kind of like a fun color. It has a cool embellishment. So I still feel like I'm kind of on trend by adding something that feels kind of like current and new, but I'm still getting the same comfort of a slip on. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for like kind of an elevated Burke. <laughs> um, and then for me, like any kind of mule, whether that's a great loafer or a sneaker. So those are like shoes that are on my to-do list. Um, and then I love, especially cause we're in winter right now is a statement coat. Um, so I was actually like literally online shopping yesterday for these, like on my phone. And I was like, just literally double clicking on the side. And I was like, blue cash card, save there. Um, so I love a statement coat because I can be wearing like the ugliest, like old sweats underneath. And if I just put on like a sheet coat on top, I feel like I'm all put together. And then if I throw on like a beanie, I'm like, and sunglasses, forget it. Like, you can't tell me I'm not a supermodel. Um, like I am Hailey Bieber. Like literally I'm Hailey Bieber in my disgusting sweats, but then I have like a sheet coat. So I added a, car, a coat to my cart yesterday. It's kind of like, um, it's a puffy coat that has like a waist cinch. So it kind of helps define your waist. So you don't feel like, like a stay puff marshmallow. I just um, did a whole roundup. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I just did a whole roundup on puffers. So it makes me think I'm on the right track from the expert. You are. And I love puffers because they're so functional, but they're so fashionable. I literally am putting together a story for my site right now because at French at Paris fashion week last winter, which is like coming up. So it was February last year. All of these women had the chicest puffers. And I literally was like, wait, I can do, we can all do that. And like, I always think like I relegate puffers to like sporty workout clothes, but they're not like, you can literally pair them with like a silk midi skirt, knee high boots, and like a great crossbody bag. And it's amazing. So a statement coat and especially a statement puffer coat is like a hundred percent on my like winter shopping list right now. So those two things I feel like are going to make me feel really put together because they're low effort and high impact. Got it. All right. Well, you guys heard it here first. You can wear a puffer <laughs> with a mini skirt. All right. Liliana says it. Okay. Uh, what about for the baby? Well, I guess he's a toddler, right? <laughs> he's a toddler. He's, I think he's officially a toddler. I don't really know what defines a toddler, but if it has anything well, to I do with Well, I can tell like, you. I can tell okay, you. tell me. Being a parenting expert, I think it comes from like toddling. They're walking. So as soon as they are mobile on their feet, they're toddlers. So. <laughs> okay. So he's been a toddler for like three months now, but I also think like his explosion when it comes to language is also making him very toddlery because he has now learned how to express opinions like mama no 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 and I'm like excuse me no 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 like doesn't want to eat dinner you know like doesn't want to put on shoes uh so for him I'm really looking into I've been doing a ton of research into like they call it like toy I think it's pronounced schemas Okay. Um, so like different things that they are naturally interested in that like spark a lot of joy in their play. So Santi is very into things that rotate right now. So right now I'm trying to like facilitate an, something that's already a preference in the way he's wired in the way his brain works. I really try to find toys that stimulate the stuff that he already likes. So for right now, we're looking into a lot of rotational toys. So like, I just like added a ton of stuff that like, like I did like a little auto, like a little screwdriver that he pushes and spins. We got him literally like a tiny fan because he's obsessed with fans and we don't have ceiling fans, um, that kind of stuff. And then I always plan ahead with clothes. So as soon as everything goes on sale the day after Christmas, I'm buying all of his winter and fall clothes, like literally December 27th for next year. I am a planner. Like, I don't care that it might not be like the trendiest. It will be like, it still will be cute on him. And I'll add little things that make it feel current, but I buy one year ahead. So as soon as we're done, like you can sure as hell bet that like I am shopping all of the sales that are happening on winter clothes and I'm buying it in like a three T and a four T so that I have it. And I'm saving like 40% off um, and getting cash back with my blue cash American express card. So you're basically saving on top of saving. 
I really love that. I've never sort of thought about that because you never know like what they're going to like, what they're going to fit into. But I mean, I think that makes a ton of sense. And it also sounds like part of this partnership with American, American Express, you're really sort of encouraging moms to, I mean, we're always shopping and taking care of others, but there is sort of like a reward in it for ourselves. Are there other things that you incorporate in your daily life that are similar to that or ways that you can kind of like take a break to sort of recharge? Oh my gosh. I am such an advocate of like mom timeouts. Like you, we need them, right? Like I thought that it made me like a superhero if I didn't take them. And it's actually the opposite. It's like at a detriment to my mental health. It's bad for my family. And I sometimes just need like 10 minutes. And I'm not saying that you're only entitled to 10 minutes. You're entitled to as much time as you need to feel better. But sometimes it's what I can squeeze in between like working and being home on time to like relieve my nanny or relieve my husband who's like worked from home and been with the baby all day. So for me, it's honestly moving my body. Um, and that doesn't have to be like a full workout class. I feel like, oh, then you're like, oh, I have to get in workout clothes. I got to get my yoga mat out. Like it's moving my body. And I happen to live in a place that's pretty hilly. So sometimes I will literally just like put in headphones, like walk down the hill and then walk up it twice. And like, I feel a thousand times better. It's also like changing the air and changing the environment that you're in. Sometimes you just need to like get out of the space that you are in. And especially if you live like with a toddler and their toys are everywhere and just everything about them is everywhere. You're like, I need to be in a place where like, I don't feel all of this. So for me, it's moving my body. And that can be as simple as like a 10 minute walk up a hill. It just feels so good. Um, and then a lot of days it's doing a full workout class because I think that that is essential to me feeling good about myself. And like, we all know this, like if mom's not okay, like family's not okay. Um, so for me, like I find the time I'm one of those people that schedules everything like in 15 minute increments because it allows me to find more time for myself. Even if I'm doing 15 here, 15 in the afternoon and 15 before bed, that's 45 minutes. Like I love 45 minutes. I can watch an entire episode of like Emily in Paris in 45 minutes. Nice. And season three just came out. So that's, exactly. That's also a really nice segue to my next question talking about kind of, you know, changing our space or maybe like leaving things behind and coming into them with like a new mindset, you know, as we're talking about, you know, coming into 2023. Is there anything that you're sort of looking to refresh for the new year? Or what would you tell moms who are kind of feeling like, I mean, I feel like moms are perpetually feeling overwhelmed, right? So we need to take those minutes, those that time rather to kind of refresh and like re look at things through fresh eyes and the new year is a perfect time to do that. So do you have tips for moms? Like if you could just re yeah. focus on one thing to refresh. Yeah. You know, so one of the things that used to really stress me out was feeling like I always had to like entertain Santiago. Like I always had to like be doing something, right? Like we always had to be doing something that was like education focused or like playing a new game. And one thing that I've noticed with him, especially as he stepped into toddlerhood, is that he just wants to be a part of whatever I'm doing. And sometimes that's cleaning. Like, I can't even tell you how excited this kid gets to clean the kitchen with me. And I give him like a little rag and he has his little mop. And so what I've noticed, and this is why I think kids really are like our teachers, is that like he is not looking for some over the top activity that takes two days to plan and that involves trying to like schedule it and get my husband to be a part of it. He wants like quality time with me and I still have to get things done. So it's reframing what I think of is an activity for him. It can be an activity that's part of my routine. Like it might take a little bit longer, right? Like he loves to help me like cook. And it might take longer, but like what he wants is your time and your attention and that I can give him incredibly generously, right? Like even going to the grocery store, like he loves sitting in that car. We like talk about the fruit. We talk about what we're going to have for dinner. He just wants to be involved. So it's really for me, like reframing what I think of is like the right things to be doing as a mom. Like what are these like Montessori activities and what are these educational experiences? Like sometimes like we're going to the grocery store together and it's like the best 45 minutes of like his day and my day because he wants to be a part of what mom is doing. So the more that you can include your children in the things that you're doing and make them feel like they're a part of it, I actually think that's like one of the most rewarding things that you can do for them. So I think that's one of the things is we need to reset what those expectations are because I think those expectations can actually be really limiting for us. And also like, you know, not everybody can spend all this money on these crazy over the top activities. Like let's take that piece away and just make it about involving them in day to day and making them feel like they're a part of what you're doing and that they're an important part of what you're doing. 
Yeah, I really love that. I feel like my kids are older, they're seven and 10, but I, I sort of like needed to hear that as well. Like they still just want to be included. And they I just want to be included. And it, I honestly, like I said, you do have to allocate more time. And I, cause I'm like such a realist. I'm so honest about that stuff. Like, listen, you're not going to get through the grocery store to-do list in 10 minutes. If you bring your kid in, it's just not going to happen. Or like, you're not going to clean your kitchen in 20 minutes. Like it does take time, but like that's time that we, I would have spent like planning the activity anyway. So I just add, a, add that time to our time together and it helps me slow down. And sometimes I need to slow down. So it's a really nice reminder. He's a really good little teacher for me. Oh, I love it. Okay. Final question. All right. What are you most looking forward to in 2023 or what is a goal of yours for 2023? Um, a goal of mine for 2023. Um, well, I think we kind of talked about it. It's just, I think being more present in the everyday with him. Um, but professionally is to, this is a big goal, but I hope I can reach it. Um, I'm launching a podcast in February with iHeart. And my goal is to get to 2 million downloads before we get to the end of the season. So I that's my goal. It's called, it's yeah. called becoming, it's called becoming an icon. Um, it's launching February. I think it's the 21st, um, with iHeart. You can get it anywhere where you obviously listen to your podcast. And it's all about the journey of the biggest names in music that are Lat Latinx. So everywhere from like Gloria Stefan to Bad Bunny, we're like breaking down all the cheese mail, all the ups and downs during becoming an icon. I love that. I can't wait to hear that. I can't wait to hear that. Yeah. So congratulations. We will be Thank sure you. to promote it here. So oh, I would love that. Thank you so much. I should come back. Oh, absolutely. We'd love to have you back. Um, and thank you so much for your time. Happy New Year. Santi is one lucky kid, let me tell you. So thank, thank you so you. much.